In this tutorial, we're going to look at absolute positioning and relative positioning. More importantly, we're going to look at how they work together. I've already set up some files for us. We have an index page that has different div tags in it. And that page looks like such. <laughs> very colorful page. And I'm doing that so it's very apparent the different div tags, the different div areas we have on this page. We're certainly not going for a good, necessarily good design color look, but we're going for a very um, apparent, obvious page layout so you can see where the different areas of the page lie. And as I go back and forth between the page layout and the code, it's, it's, it'll be obvious on what um, areas of the page I'm, I'm referring to. So this is our page layout. Obviously I have a, uh, a background color happening with a body tag, this wonderful pink color. And then we have I think up to six different div areas for the actual content of the page. We have a what I called in the code an outside wrap that contains all these boxes. You can see a little bit of the outside wrap down here at the bottom. We have some some of the uh, that div tag showing up at the bottom. And actually, this color, if any of these div areas were to be, were to be removed, you see this color behind it. And I'll I'll show you a quick demo of that in just a sec. We have the header image area at the top here followed. Right underneath that is the horizontal nav bars. This is where we can place our links. Then we have uh, a content area, which is this, this maroon color. This content area actually slides up underneath the horizontal nav bar. So the horizontal nav bar is contained within the content area. And we also have this text area. And then we have this right box over here on, on the right side of the page layout, which is actually the focus of, of this tutorial. And this right box actually covers two different div areas. It covers the horizontal nav bar up at the top and then uh, continues down into the, the main content area overlapping this, this maroon area. And then at the bottom here, it looks like we have a footer, but it's actually just um, our main content area that continues to the bottom of, of the page layout. So having said that, let's take a look at the code here and maybe give you a little better idea of how I've arranged and organized this, this page. So after the body tag, I have a div that contains the outside wrap. If we look at what the outside wrap looks like in the CSS style sheets, notice it right here. It has a width of 800. It's going to be centered on the page via this margin at zero auto. And the background color is the 690, which is actually this maroon color. So this outside wrap contains all the content that we have in our page. After the outside wrap, we have another div for a header. This, of course, is, is this area of the page. If we look at the styling for that in our CSS style sheet, it's very simple. We simply have a background color with the white text showing up. So that's the first div that we have inside or outside wrap. The header div is followed by the main content area. And as soon as we define the main content area, the first thing we can plug in to that area is this, is this horizontal nav bar. So let's look at, at the, how both of those divs are defined in our style sheet. The main content area, which includes the horizontal nav bar, is defined as position relative I'm not going to talk too much about that right now. I will come back to that when we get to the to the box on the right, because that's that's where this position relative will become important. And the only other style we have applied to the main content is this background color of 933. And that is what gives us um, this maroon color. You know, actually I was mistaken. I mentioned the 690 color. That actually gives us this, this wonderful olive green color for our for our outside wrap, whereas the main content gives us this maroon color. As you mentioned back here within the main content, the first div we have inside there is this horizontal nav bar. And if we look at the style for that, again, it's very simple, just a background color, which gives us this, this wonderful shade of green for our horizontal nav bar area. And a padding, which simply offsets the, the text a bit from the edges of that area. All right. So, so far, so good. This, the next div, which is also fairly simple, is this main text area. And this is like the main, main text of the page. 
And that corresponds to this white area that we see here in our page layout. If we go back to the styling of that main text area, you notice it right here. So with the 500, so that gives us this area that we see right behind here. It has a background color of white, a padding of 10 pixels, which offsets the text just a bit from the edges. And to bring it in a little bit from, from the left edge of the main content area, which it sits inside, we give it a left, a margin left setting of 30 pixels. And now we get to the really interesting stuff. The next div is the right box. And I'm going to drag this over here to the left so we can see. This section is, is the code for the right box. Let's look at the styling we've applied to the right box, which is defined right here. I have a position absolute. I'm going to come back to that in just a sec. Um, let's talk about these, these last several styling, then we'll come back to the position in the top and right attributes. Background color of CF, CF0 gives us this wonderful yellow green shade. Minimum height is 400 pixels, so, so it will always at least be that height and will expand if necessary, a width of 150, and a padding of 7 offsets the text a bit from the edges. Let's spend some time talking about these three attributes. Position, which is set to absolute, top and right. This right box, I wanted to place it in this specific um, area of the page layout. And the way I did that was, was by using the absolute position and then defining where I wanted to absolutely set that. Top zero pixels means I wanted zero pixels from the top, and right means 50 pixels from the right. But you're going to notice something here. It, it, it's, it's setting itself zero pixels from the top according to this main content area and 50 pixels from the edge of the main content area. The way this attribute works, the position absolute, is if I define a position with absolute for a, a, a div area, it's going to go back and start looking at all the containers that this right box is contained within. And it's going to absolutely position it uh, to any areas that has a position relative on it that, it's, that this box is inside. That's why, as I mentioned earlier, this here becomes very important. I put position relative on the main content area, so when it got to the right box with the position at position absolute, it would use these these values of top and top and right, and position it within the main content area. So to, to demo this, I'm going to comment out this position relative attribute for the main content area. I think. There we go. I'm going to save that style sheet after commenting out that position relative to the main content. Now, it, when it gets down to this position absolute, it's going to look for any position relatives attribute that any of the outside boxes have. So any any box that this div right box is inside. So it's going to look at. If I scroll up here. So look at main content for position relative. If it does, doesn't find one there, it will look for outside wrap. If it doesn't find one there, it's going to default to the body tag, which if we look at our style sheets, no position relative here, no position relative in the main content because you commented out. So it's going to default to position absolutely to the body tag, which will be the, the size of the browser window. So let's actually see that in action. I'm going to refresh my screen. And yes, in fact, it does. It moves this yellow green box up to the top of the window and keeps it 50 pixels from the right of the window. To demo this, if I start bringing this in, notice that box always stays 50 pixels to the ed from the right edge of the window. So it positioned it absolutely from the size of the window, which means it defaults back to the body tag. But that's not the that's not exactly where I want this to lay. This right box to lay. I want it to actually lay on top of the horizontal nav bar and then continue down into the main content area. So that is why I had plugged in, sorry about that, the position relative attribute for the main content. 
I nix those comments out of there. Now when it gets back, sees its position absolute, it's going to start looking back into the containers that contains this right box to see where it should position it, to see where it should absolutely position itself up against. When it finds this right here, it's going to say, oh, I need to position that absolutely inside the main content area. So if we save this, do a refresh back in our browser window, and in fact it does. So that's an example of how the positioning, the absolute positioning and the relative positioning work together.